Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, have you tried an internet vacation? Let's talk about it. So let's look at the pens. Alright, so these are the pens and inks that I have this week. I have a Platinum Izumo, which you saw this week. A Platinum 3776, which you also saw this week. Uh, I did a first impression here. I did a, uh, a video where I compared a bunch of Platinum nibs. I have a Nakia, Nakia Decapod Twist, a Caveco Sport, a Pelican MK10, a Lamy 80, a uh, Senator President, so, uh, oh, I don't have my Platinum President here. I was going to say we can compare Presidents, but, uh, and then we have a Artisan Classic. made by JPL in Australia. As always, I'll be doing my writing sample in my BOMO art journal from Hungary. Budapest, Hungary, actually. All right, so July 24th, 2020. Oop, I gotta zoom out just so we can fit this pen in. <laughs> so my first pen is my Platinum Izumo. You can get a better look at the beautiful artwork on it uh, in my video. I have the link in the video description. Uh, this pen was purchased entirely with advertising dollars from this channel. And I will just say, if it weren't for those advertising dollars, I wouldn't own it. Because <laughs> it's an expensive bugger. So thank you. You know, it took a, almost two years between the three pens that I bought. But I think it was worth it. I enjoy it. Uh, one of the things I did when I ordered this pen, it has a double broad nib, which Platinum calls a coarse nib. Uh, I had the uh, Dan Smith of the Nib Spith grind it to a cursive italic. So if you're used to the blob of tipping that's on a typical coarse nib, he shaved it off. All right, and the ink in it is Parker Quink Washable Blue. We'll just abbreviate as Parker Blue because it's not like they have a whole lot of colors. Uh, I chose to put that ink in this pen for the video because I was comparing four different nibs. And you're going to see this ink again. It's a good ink. You know, maybe not the most exciting, but you can see some shading here. Uh, it's a... Uh, and, of course, you want to standardize if you're comparing nibs. I'll just mention somebody uh, asked me what was special about a cursive italic. Uh, if, if you have, a, I should do a video on nibs. Uh, if you have just a regular stub, often they're not tipped. But think of this as a stub. But and we'll do a side view here. But instead of grinding it more rounded, it's ground uh, more straight on like this, and it has tipping left on it. So, yeah. Now I'm thinking I do need to do a video on types of nibs obliques, um, stubs, cursive italic, regular nibs, architect nib. All right, I will hopefully write that idea down before I forget it. <laughs> My next pen was, is going to have the same ink in it. It's a Platinum 3776 with a koi finish. This pen, I think, has more fans than I do. Oh, and you can see, you know, it's not the double broad, but you can see it has more tipping. And it is a different nib. It's a 3776 nib. And I did get into what makes a 3776 nib different from a president nib in that video. Oops, forgot a 7 there. So again, Parker Quink Washable Blue. I'm actually, you're going to be seeing a lot of this ink. I uh, batch filmed a bunch of videos earlier this week. Uh, I used, I want to say I used this ink in every single one. 
Because, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm hungry to use up a bottle of ink. And this is a good one, but uh, I think it'll be good to have one less bottle of ink floating around the house. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, the next pen. It's been in use. Uh, the Nakia Decapod Twist. Uh, I was kind of surprised, but maybe I shouldn't have been when I learned way back that Naka uses the same nib as the 3776. This is a soft, fine nib. So, you know, different things stamped on it, but it is the same nib. Uh, this ink is Pelican Edelstein Quartz. Kind of want to try this ink in a broader nib i haven't you know i bought the bottle but then i haven't used it very much you know, brown is a, a color that's largely missing in my collection of inks and you know i might try rectifying that except i've got too many bottles of ink anyway so I'm trying not to increase the collection my next pen is a usually in the summer I'm using pocket pens a lot more. I'm going places, and it's nice to have something to throw in my pocket. Uh, this summer, I'm not really going anywhere, thanks to the virus. So, uh, yeah, this has been pretty much unused. I, I was out uh, doing some behind-the-scenes work to set up for a funeral this, this week, so it was in my pocket there, but I never actually used it, because... The kind of work I was doing didn't involve using a pen. It was more manual labor. So this is a Caveco Sport. This is a little bit older one. Not, you know, real old. But this is back one of my first pens I bought when I got serious about the hobby. So I guess the nib units are a little different now. But, uh... I don't know, it, it, this is not a pen I enjoy for long bouts of writing. The pen is okay for uh, jotting a quick note, which is good because what I use this pen for is if I'm out and I want to write something down real quick, that's what I do with it. I don't do long writing sessions with this pen. Uh, the nib isn't that fun. And the pen just, I mean, it's okay in the hand, but it's nothing special. Uh, I, I know there are some channels, like uh, ODE's channel is very much centered on Caveco with a few other pens thrown in, it feels like sometimes. And he's a big fan of the model, which is fine. Everybody's different. This pen is a lot more interesting. This is a, well, it's been my uh, black pen for the last week or two. A couple of weeks. I think I've refilled it once, too. Uh, one thing I've noticed, we'll see if it happens here while I'm writing. Uh, I think there is like a micro crack in it somewhere. But this is a Pelican MK10. I believe it has a steel nib. I haven't taken it apart to look, but usually if they're gold, they say something on the nib somewhere. So it's a fine point. And again, the ink in it. Actually, I think I'm wrong. I don't think this is Lamy Black. Even though I've been trying to use up Lamy Black, I think this is left over from back when I was did the black video. The black ink video. Oh, this says Lamy Black. Let me just go back one more week. You can't see it, but I have Evernote open. Uh, I always put the Evernote link down below, which usually has some pictures and things. Uh, so I'm going back to my Evernote page for the week I did all black inks, which apparently was quite a while ago, because I'm back in June now. Actually, you know what, I think... 
Looks like I didn't use this pen then. Yeah, I had the Pelican Silvex. I didn't use this pen at all. All right, now I know. I, I have it. Prob I know I have it written down because I do a notebook where I keep track of when I ink up a pen. But I don't know. The black just looks different. But I know I'm. Tr this is another bottle I'm trying to use up, and I'm very close. So I'm just going to assume it's Lamy Black, and we'll find out here. We'll see if it looks the same. Because guess who has too many bottles of ink? And the Lani bottle is actually one when I do run it empty, I will be refilling with something else. There, I think that, uh, that looks pretty good. Yeah, as it dries, it is looking slightly different color. So, I don't know. This is a uh, Lamy 80 with a double broad nib. I think it's a, it seems like a relative of the Lamy 2000. Uh, I've had this ink in it. I, I had it last week. I will be honest. This is a very pretty color. I'm not so much of a fan of it as a writing ink though. So, I haven't been using a whole lot of it. Uh, you know, it's it's, op it's open, I'm using it, but uh, yeah. So the ink in it is Sweet Honeydew. I had the suggestion to try it in like a medium or a broad, regular broad nib. So I think that's what I'll do next. It's, uh, like I said, it's a nice color. It just... Uh, not that easy to read. Uh, one of my videos that's waiting, I did a comparison of uh, the steel and the gold nib. Uh, Senator President, uh, somebody sent me a steel nib. So uh, I inked them, of course, with the same ink. I didn't use uh, the, Pelli the Parker Blue this time. I used a different ink because I know it looks good in this pen. And that's something I wanted to compare. One of my favorite inks, actually. At least this bottle of it. Noodlers can be a little inconsistent. So this is uh, the broad gold nib. So this is Noodlers. Black Swan in Australian Rose. I actually had a vote on my, uh, whatever it's called, community page, uh, which, video, which uh, pen I should do next. I, I've actually filmed all the reviews, I just haven't... Uh, you know, published them. Because like I said, I did some batch filming. And uh, the winner was actually this pen. Geha 726. So this will be the video on Monday. And I don't know if you can tell. I can sort of see it in the preview. It's inked up with blue ink. My last pen for this week, because... Uh, well, I've been trying to... I, a lot of my pens that are inked up are the ones that I you haven't seen yet, so I can't put them on the show till I've got a video about them. Uh, so they're just hiding. But this pen has been actually kind of impressive. You know, I faulted some things about it when I did its rev original review, uh, but uh, it's holding a good seal on this ink, and it sat for a long time not being used. So this is an Artisan Classic. So whatever other faults it may have, uh, as far as the finish or uh, the construction or whatever, it does hold a good seal. So this is a Girbon Emerald of Chivor. I 
I don't know why, maybe it's my gardening, but I always see Chivor and think chives. And it's one of those sparkly inks, and it's got a little bit of sheen to it, too. I uh, was going to do a video where I reviewed sparkly inks, and it's going to review some shading inks, and uh, I don't know. I just kind of, I got, I started making lists and even asking for advice, and I just kind of lost interest. I, uh, so I'll put that on the back burner, but what I thought might be a more interesting video and to me, because, you know, it has to interest me if I'm going to do it as a video, might be a video where I just explain some ink terms. So, that's what I'm going to do sometime this summer before school gets started. So, you can kind of see, sort of, the nifty sparkles. I have found that, you know, when I have my living room lit by just daylight, which, uh, it would be right now if I weren't filming this video that these uh, sparkly inks show up really well I found that if it's not lit with daylight you know if I'm using the artificial lights which is what I'm under right now uh, the sparkles show up very well so yeah apparently the sparkles work better under artificial light I don't know if it's because it comes from more directions or what but anyway those are the inks and pens that I've been primarily using this week. I'll just mention in my uh, whole discussion of pens, uh, one of the options that we'll be doing, I'm just going to reveal part of it. This is the other expensive pen that I bought with my channel advertising income. Uh, it's an Aurora. You can probably guess the model from that, but you can't see what the finish is. So I will be doing that. It, it is filmed. I just... I don't know, I didn't want to do two expensive pens close together because this is not the expensive pen channel. I don't want it to become that. So I, w I thought I'll, somewhat later, I'll do that one. Mm. So I, I just wanted to mention again about this uh, Petty Con because I, I think I got sidetracked. One of the things it's been doing while I've been writing with it, and there you can see it, somehow from somewhere, I'm getting ink on myself. So I can't find it. But I feel like there are micro cracks somewhere in this barrel. You know, I can see what look like little scratches and things. Uh, and some inks seem to leak more than others. But, you know, when I do a long session with that pen, I end up ink on my hands. And uh, so I'm, I've got a pen repair video next week, and I want to do one on resacking the week after. But uh, I have a chemical called Captain Tolly's that's been suggested for crack repair not to repair it necessarily but to seal it so after I get that pen cleaned out I may just experiment with some Captain Tollies I've never worked with it before we'll see what I can do uh, in other exciting news oh yeah and I do have a spare barrel for it I picked up except it has silver trim instead of the gold trim so I guess if I get really desperate I could do that all right, so I've been batch filming a bunch of ent intros and exits, so I need a quick drink of wine, but I don't have any, so I'm drinking coffee. All right, so <laughs> hopefully I didn't turn my teeth or my lips brown. Anyway, um, so those are the pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. Uh, I talked to you a little bit about the Pelican MK10. Uh, you may have noticed, sorry, I'm looking at my script, make sure I get everything in order here. Uh, you may have noticed I missed last week, so I'll tell you what happened. Um, I took an internet vacation last week, which, you know, I was planning, I, I planned I just won't have any episodes next week, and I'll just tell everybody about it on Friday, pens in use. And uh, so Friday morning I got back on the internet, and uh, one of the first things I discovered was a gentleman I knew uh, named... I guess I'll just do his first name. Uh, Howard had died that week. He was 102 years old. I, uh, I've known him probably for 11 years. So, uh, yeah, I didn't take that too well. And uh, that whole pens and use thing. Yeah, I, I was not in a place to do that last week. So I didn't. 
I, I did post briefly about, you know, and, and what's funny is I, you know, my, the first post I did was about, oh, look at these expensive pens I got. Number two just arrived. And, uh, and then I get on the internet and discover the rest of it. So, uh, yeah, I, I just wasn't in a place to do pens and use. Howard was kind of cool. I, uh, I was part of a, well, there used to be a lot of churches out in the country. Uh, so I used to be part of one that's, uh, you know, it was a small, older congregation. Like, <laughs> I was the young one there. Uh, I actually was still in my 30s when I when I was going there. But anyway, he, he, he'd been a member of it since he was a kid. I, he grew up in that church. His, uh, the ranch where he grew up was just over the hill. He uh, then went on to ranch, to, to be the rancher at the ranch. And uh, then his daughter and her husband took it over. Uh, last fall, I went to his daughter's funeral, uh, and then, uh, well, his funeral was this week. I, uh, with with COVID and everything, I, I would have liked to have gone, but with COVID, of course, I didn't. Um, but yeah, he was very active. So so is this country church, and uh, no running water at the place. But what was kind of wild is uh, all these older ranchers. Uh, the, after church, they would have this lunch. So, there, uh, you know, it, the church is small, of course. You know, there's this, uh, the churchy part built in 1914. And then the the back, they had an addition they'd put on sometime in the 20s. Howard remembered it. He'd been like 9 or 10 when they did it. Uh, but it was uh, this old house that had been abandoned. So um, cause a lot of people were moving out of the area then. And so they uh, dragged it down with, hor with horses, because, you know, it's the 20s, and uh, attached it to the church. And it became a kitchen, and they called it a dining room. It's like a fellowship hall. But really, it was just a, a room that had a giant, like, think of the Waltons type <laughs> dining room table that uh, after church, the whole congregation would sit around it. Um, back then... They usually had to bring over a, a second table that they, you know, it was, it was a plastic long card table. You can buy them now, um, you know, just to seat everybody. And it's just this long that everybody would make something. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot about cooking by being part of this. And, uh, you know, we'd just hang out. And, uh, you know, a lot of adaptations had to be made because of the lack of running water. Uh somebody had to bring water from home there was always coffee had to do dishes afterwards um but you know over the years people died people went into nursing homes um you know the last time i attended there there were two of us and you know by then I've, I've talked a little bit about my religious beliefs by then my religious beliefs had changed quite a bit but uh one thing uh i always remember about howard because, like I said, he was active. He, he was doing fencing for people in his 90s. Um, the, the outhouses both needed a new roof. Um, the men's was in a lot worse. Because, yeah, no running water, so what do you do? Uh, the men's was in a lot worse shape. So uh, we decided to do that one first. And he needed somebody to help him. So I'm a teacher. I had summers off. So I volunteered my services. And... I pretty much figured I'd be doing the work. Now, Howard, you know, living through the Great Depression and everything, he, he was all about saving money. He'd gotten this piece of horrible steel roofing that uh, had blown off of a building somewhere. And uh, so he was able, he thought, to trim out enough of it to be a decent roof. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But we had to take the old shakes off of the outhouse roof first. Uh, so he backed his pickup up to the outhouse, and I climbed up the ladder. And I don't like heights, but I'm okay on a roof, uh, as long as it's not real steep. And uh, so I start pulling off shakes and throwing them down to the back of his pickup. And next thing I know, he's up there with me. And remember, this is a man in his 90s. So, yeah, that's, that's the kind of guy he was. Um, you know, he showed me around where he'd been fencing once, uh, he showed me uh, where, where his, uh, well, he, he'd had two wives in his life because he outlived both of them. Uh, 
but you know he, when he married his second wife is about when his daughter and her husband took over the ranch uh, he moved to his wife's place and his wife actually had a little bit of land so he got to do some ranching over there but uh anyway they uh they'd show me around and he knew everybody and i don't just mean all the people there now he knew people from way way back and uh you know, sometimes the stories would get repetitive, especially as he got older. He'd tell the same one because he'd forget he'd told it. But he could tell you about, you know, what looks like, you know, a shack. And he could tell you all about the family that lived there and what happened to him. So, you know, he stayed pretty sharp up until the end. I, I know uh, he took he took his daughter's death really hard. Um, I think he was seeing what had happened with her with her mother uh replaying with her uh there, there was more to it you know there was some medical malpractice and everything but you know at he was 101 then um i think he'd been spared a lot of the details by his family about what was going on but uh he took that pretty hard and i guess he he went downhill pretty quickly after that um so you know it's not like this was a surprise but uh I don't, it's, it's always a blow, you know, no matter what. Um, I remember after, at his 100th birthday, you know, his brand new joke was, yeah, the first 100 years are the hardest. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he's somebody I'm always going to remember. He, uh, a good man, you know, I, uh, I don't know what else to say. He, he, uh, left a big impact. So, uh. Yeah, that's uh, where I was with pens and use last week, and uh, I don't know, maybe I could have done it anyway, but I just wasn't, I don't know, it just seemed so frivolous and silly right at that time, so I didn't. Um, I will say that uh, other than I... I, it's not like I could have done anything if I'd known the day he died. Um, but other than that, taking a few days off the internet, I just read books. I uh, didn't watch any movies because, you know, I'm all online with that. Uh, worked in my garden. Did a little work on the house. I, I got to start painting. But, you know, it's just really nice. And then you get back on the internet and you're like, holy cow. It's like nothing ever changes. Um President Trump is still tweeting stupid stuff. Um, everybody's still fighting and people are still denying science. So, you know, how do you win? <laughs> it, it, I have noticed since then I've been a lot more selective. Like, okay, Trump tweeted something stupid. Do I really need to read that article? Um, no, because <laughs> I don't care. Um, so, you know, it, for now, it's made me a lot more selective about what I read and put into my head, I guess. So, I guess I'm happier that way. Uh, so, this last week, um, like I said, uh, what finally broke my internet hiatus was going down to the post office and finding out that my other expensive pen was there. I haven't uh, shown it to you yet, but it, it's an Aurora. You'll have to wait till I feel the need to spice up the channel a little bit. But... Uh, I'm in, I've been enjoying it, and so, uh, you know, five months after I ordered it, it, it came. In that, <laughs> excuse me, in that case, it literally was five months. Um, and, uh, and then I, uh, when did I do the survey? I think it must have been after that. No, I did a survey that night. This was before I learned about Howard. I did a survey that night about which pen everybody wanted to see first. So I've done that one. That was that wonderful Platinum Izumo. And uh, this past week I did another survey because I, I did some batch filming of a uh, whole bunch of pens. And uh, so I asked which one everybody wants to see first. The winner was Geha 726. So expect that one on Monday. And... Uh, on Wednesday, there's going to be a pen repair video. It's going to be more of a, what do I look at when I get a pen? So I've got a semi-interesting pen that I'll, I'll have for you there. And uh, then next week, we'll, well, we'll see. More pens.
because it seems to be a pen channel. I guess I was thinking about one other thing with uh, Howard that I'll close this off with. One of the great things about being an adult, it's not like when you're in school where you're, you're in your classes just with your own age group. Like, uh, if you're a 12 year old, you're in a class with a bunch of 12 year olds. Usually, I mean, some, there are a few schools that structure it differently. You know, you get to high school, you may have a couple of electives where you, you have a variety of ages. You know, I, I know we have a couple of electives at my high school where you, you, you might be with anyone from a freshman up to a senior in your class. And, uh, you know, so you get a little bit more diversity, but still kind of that very common culture. Uh, so some maturity differences to be sure, but anyway, as an adult, suddenly you're thrust into a world like when I started teaching, I was the youngest teacher in my school. Now, uh, there were what two that were close to my age and everybody else was quite a lot older. And, uh, you know, all the way up to retirement age. And it wasn't a very big school. It's much smaller than the one where I teach now. But I got to know a lot of people of varying ages there. And then uh, actually the first two people, I, I probably should save this story for when I take you through that town, which uh, was going to happen this summer, but thanks to the virus, it won't. Um, the first people I really met in that town were a retired pharmacist and his wife. They'd run the drugstore. Uh, he had, I want to say it was Parkinson's. So he, he'd been forced to sell the store. Uh, but of course, nobody bought it. So you know, it was another business that dried up on that main street, which will be a story I'll have to tell when I take you through that town. But uh, anyway, they uh, introduced themselves to me. Uh, they were the first people really to introduce themselves to me. I'd met... You know, my uh, landlord already, I, I'd seen, I'd you know met a couple of people. I knew where I was going to live. I, I'd just actually gotten my post office box. And uh, it turned out the lady at the post office is actually the daughter of this couple. <laughs> but anyway, they, uh, so they introduced themselves to me. Um, he actually died that fall. I, not related to his Parkinson's, it was a... Uh, had an aneurysm in his, I guess, in his stomach. He was, vom anyway, I'm told he was vomiting blood. But he died of that on the way to the hospital. And uh, so she was a widow. And uh, I would help her out with things, you know, uh, when she needed some muscle or uh, someone to drive her somewhere because she couldn't drive that far. Um, and she definitely had her quirks <laughs> that would be a she'd be a whole video by herself i think maybe a whole series of videos but uh anyway I, that's one thing you know that was my first real experience with it in college again i was hanging out mostly with people my own age but as i uh instead of being seen as the kid you know as i got more gray hair especially it helped um i really hung out with a whole diversity of ages and uh you, you know you just get a much richer experience you know, knowing howard i and all the people at that church i definitely got a look at a way of life that is gone what was it like to be a cowboy back in the 30s the 40s the 50s nothing at all like it is now uh i know a man he, he's actually still alive but uh you know, he, his memory is, anyway, uh, but he, he was part of a uh, cattle drives. That's what they used to do is they'd uh, drive the cattle down to Marmoth to, to load them on the trains there. You, you don't do that anymore, but that's what he grew up doing. They, they kind of follow the little Missouri river down because he lives way out in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, you know, so I know people like, what's the name of that movie? Uh, Red River? It's a John Wayne movie. Anyway, they're, they're doing a cattle drive, and it takes forever. Um, that was him. That, that was this guy, only he wasn't some Hollywood actor. He, he was the real thing. 
Um, that was Howard, too, although he lived a lot closer to Marmoth, so it wasn't nearly the adventure for him as it was for this other guy. And, you know, they, they know the time when uh, medical care was really hard to get in the winter. Uh, I, I reviewed the book uh, Prairie School. Of, I guess it's been a couple of months now. And that isolation... That not being able to get help, not being able to get a doctor, not being able to call anybody. That's the world they grew up in. And they knew. So that history is still alive here. And uh, I don't care where you live. Those older people have a lot of history. And, uh, you know, as you get more into your 40s like I am, you start to realize that younger people, yeah, they, they have their quirks. But... They've got a lot of knowledge, too, That's and a lot of ideas that are very different from how you think about things. And uh, Anyway, it's just something I appreciate about getting older, is getting to know all these... Uh, not being so locked into a small age group, uh, having a wide group of friends that spans all ages. So, anyway, I, I guess I got a little off my outline there <laughs> toward the end. Um... So, I want to thank you for watching and putting up with me, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.